Good morning and welcome to the third of our interviews for the Masterclass Global Actors for Peace. I'm really glad and honored to welcome today Luis Felipe Viveros, who is a researcher at the University College of London and a human rights expert, and uh, that will share today um, a bit of his experience as human rights lawyer in particular. So Luis, you are uh, in particular a defender of victims. Could you tell us something about uh, uh, your profession and uh, your role as a lawyer in this sense? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm Colombian. Uh, and as you know, uh, Colombia has been immersed in an internal armed conflict for over 50 years now. Uh, in that context, uh, I mean, coming from a family of lawyers, uh, I started to get interest in, interested in this uh, after a personal experience of mine. I was kidnapped by guerrillas in 2000. Uh, that was my first year of law school. Before that, I wanted to be a commercial lawyer. Um, that was my dream. Uh, but after that, uh, I decided to change focus, uh, and uh, I started to get interested in international human rights law. Um, what I do, basically, is I represent human rights victims where there is um, responsibility on the part of the Colombian state. I represent uh, hundreds of cases against the military in Colombia, and then some of those cases I represent before the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights uh, and the court as well. Um, and, you know, instrumental to all of that, um, I interned at the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, then I was a lawyer at the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, and all my research and academic interests um, are instrumental to that, to my role as an advocate uh, for human rights victims in Colombia. Uh, Luis, you mentioned before your personal experience that somehow tell us uh, how painful can be a peace process, uh, uh, an internal peace process. Uh, um, so I wanted to ask you if you can share something more about uh, your experience. What, what has been, uh, what did it meant? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I've been thinking uh, a lot uh, about this lately, and particularly about a person that I met during uh, my kidnapping uh, in the jungle. Um, there was uh, a boy there. His name was Camilo. He was 13. Uh, and that um, image has never left me. Uh, a boy of 13 with an AK-47, a uniform. That just doesn't fit um, your idea of a perpetrator. Of course, he was a perpetrator, but he was also a victim. And those two things are dilemmatic in nature. Mm -hmm. It's hard to reconcile that. And if you add to that um, the expectations of the Colombian society, of particular groups, of me uh, also, and I don't want to be selfish, but I also would like to see some justice done there. If you try to think of that, how to reach a compromise, that can be very painful for a society. Mm -hmm. it, it's hard to come to terms with that and to um, who should ultimately bear responsibility for um, what's happened in the last 50 years in Colombia. Um, but of course, um, one has to divorce itself, himself, oneself from um, what you are as a person when you are a lawyer also. Um, so I view my role um, with victims um, only from what they expect from the system. It is not up to me to decide uh, the larger questions. It is up to me to make sure that um, what they expect from the system uh, is um, more or less recognized. Uh, so that's what I do. Uh, that's, I don't um, approach my role from an activism point of view. Um, in Colombia, you, that can be very ideological. Mm -hmm. um, and that's OK for me. Uh, but I think that lawyers have um, a particular responsibility in what regards um, their, their role in, in that context. Um, but it's problematic. Um, there are no easy answers to that. And, and we are trying to find those answers right now in Colombia. Mm -hmm. Um, Luis, as you know, we decided to devote this masterclass to the role of global actors for peace. Can you env envisage a role for global actors in, in a conflict that has been fundamentally internal? Uh... Yes, um, I think that actually uh, this peace process is interesting um, from an external point of view because of that. We have the Security Council involved there. Um, they're actually overseeing the disarmament of the guerrillas of the FARC. Uh, they are overseeing that the parties comply with the responsibilities under the agreement that they reached. Um, countries were instrumental in reaching that agreement as well, Cuba and Norway particularly. Uh, even the European Court of Human Rights has a commissioner there um, uh, 
participating in um, the nomination and selection of the panel of judges that will uh, decide on international crimes committed in the context of the armed conflict. We have the United States um, because, of course, the FARC is also labeled as, an inter as a terrorist organization and perhaps uh, the main drug trafficking cartel in the world. Uh, so, of course, there is a, a role for um, global actors. Uh, and, of course, uh, in my view, and this is what I find most interesting, uh, for international courts. Mm -hmm. This is the first peace process in Colombia where the ICC uh, will have full uh, jurisdiction over what happens. Mm -hmm. And that has been shaping uh, not only um, the legal side of things, but also the narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, many times even on, on wrong basis, uh, just assumptions that don't exist as a matter of international law. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's interesting just to see how the existence, the mere existence of these institutions in Costa Rica, the Inter-American Court mm -hmm. of Human Rights, and in The Hague, Mm -hmm. um, the ICC shape everything. Mm -hmm. um, so not only uh, there is a role, but I think that there are main players mm -hmm. uh, in, in the Colombian uh, process. Wonderful. So we really look forward to know more about all these uh, tomorrow. And we thank you very much, uh, Luis Viveros, uh, uh, for being with us today. Um, and see you on the next appointment uh, of the Masterclass in Peels. Thank you very much.